Ah. So, I've been doing an experiment for the last week or so, really quite an intense experiment um, at a nuclear reactor. So this is one of those things where you, you're basically doing the experiment almost 24-7. I mean, you do get some sleep between the experiments, but they, they're usually so costly to run that uh, you've got to be pretty committed to it. And the system that we were looking at is, is fairly similar to this guy. This is a purine ring of some sort, it's a guanine it looks like. But yeah, so the, the, this is in the middle of your DNA, um, you know, that guy up there. That's not really the bit we're interested in. The bit we're interested in is just that five-membered ring on the top, um, which is an uh, imidazole ring. And imidazole is interesting because it's the side chain of the amino acid histidine, which turns out to be really important for all sorts of protein interactions like the insulin in your body that regulates your sugar and that sort of thing. So it's really quite pervasively important. And we were doing the experiment at a, a neutron reactor. Now neutrons, uh, it's a rather bizarre technique. They've got some advantages or some disadvantages. Um, the advantages is it can tell you things that you really cannot find out from other methods. The disadvantage, of course, is it's bloody ludicrously expensive to actually get a neutron source. So one of the best ways of getting a neutron source is just to run a nuclear reactor. And uh, there is only, there, there is one powerful neutron reactor that is used for research purposes like this in, in the European Union. And that's called the Institute La Langevin. And it's very expensive and it has contributors from lots of nations. And the UK is a prime contributor to it. Contributes about a third of the budget. So the total budget is about a hundred million euros or so, give or take. And uh, the, the UK contribution is about uh, 25, 30 million, that sort of thing. And this is just one of the direct impacts before anything has really happened, all that's happened so far is there's been a referendum, the Brexit referendum. No one's done anything. But just the jitters from that, the pound has gone down somewhere between 10 and 15% against the dollar, maybe half that against the euro. And this is a direct impact of this on British science. And that's the British contribution to this reactor is, say, 30 million. And that means that ten, and the budget's done in euros. So if Britain wants to maintain its commitment to institutes like this that can make unique discoveries that you really can't make by other methods, then that, that's going to cost you an extra three million extra pounds just because the amount, the pound's gone down against the euro. And that money's got to come from somewhere, which basically means someone's got to take a, a cut somewhere else, and that's going to be spread over British science in general. And this is before anything has happened. You're looking at losing millions of pounds of, of British research money. And that's, on the grand scheme of things, that's relatively peanuts compared to what Britain's going to lose overall, in that for British research, um, it got about, I think it's a... Uh, 300 million pounds a year extra out of the EU than it put in for its science budget. So and the idea that this, you know, we're just going to have a vote um, because of democracy and we're going to get the British government to put that money back into science is just purely delusional when you consider how many times the, a, a conservative government like the one that we have at the moment has actually put extra money into science. Um, so, I mean, this is really going to be damaging for science in the United Kingdom. And this, you know, people ask me, you know, what is my actual investment in this? Because I'm not, I'm not employed in the United Kingdom. But if you look at almost everything that I've ever done, it's defending um, science in one form or another from, well, <laughs> all, all takers, whether they be creationists trying to push, um, you know, creationism or some biblical interpretation of this, that, or the other, you know, basically polluting science like that, or pseudo-scientists with their thorium-powered cars or solar roadways or whatever. It all basically is, is using the, the credibility of science to sell bullshit. And the same with feminism. The, oh, well, come on, this idea that there's a feminist 
version of glaciology or something is just a complete farce. And you know, having these people try and ride on the coattails of science um, just dis discredits real science. Um, and that's basically my interest here is um, this will have a large damaging effect on British science. And even though I'm, I'm not actually uh, uh, paid by Great Britain, I can see that this, this is, this is going to hurt science in the United Kingdom. And this is really, <laughs> nothing's happened yet. There has been a referendum. No one has actually talked about leaving the EU yet. And th this is um, one of the reasons why I, I talk about this is because you take a look at the, the, the budgets of things that have previously undermined science, like, you know, the solar roadways, oh, $2 million, whatever. That's comparable to the instantaneous extra budget that Britain's going to have to now put into just one reactor. Or, you know, if you look at about a, in total, all of the previous pseudoscience that I've debunked is peanuts compared to the damage that's going to be done to British science over this. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's my, my issue, other than it just being bloody stupid. Um, and you can sort of see this immediately in the, the day after the Brexit. I mean, Brexit's caused the political suicide of virtually all of its leaders. You know, <laughs> Boris Johnson, he goes from, this will be our Independence Day, to the day afterwards saying we need lots of close ties with Europe, basically describing the exact European Union that he's just left and Farage the same. And the reason for all of this, of course, is what they promised is not what they, you know, the, the, the prime things that they were promising, that um, Britain's gonna be fabulous outside of the European Union. Economically, it's gonna be all green hills and blue skies, that sort of thing. Well, the reality is virtually everyone immediately after they won said what Brexit will look like in practice is we'll still be part of the common market, which basically means we'll pay almost exactly as much in to the European Union as we do currently. So there's going to be no real saving there whatsoever. And the second one is that we're going to get control of our borders. Well, part of the requirement for the common market is the free movement of people. So in reality, there's going to be no more control over the borders. There's going to be no, there's no, going to be no saving at all um, over what you had previously. So what was all this in aid of? Well, yeah, why, why have you taken this? Uh, you, the pound's gone down 10% sort of overnight over this. And this, this isn't sort of, oh, it's going to bounce back sometime later. You look at all the long-term uncertainty of this, which is probably going to go on for years, um, it, it's one of the most financially stupid things uh, that a democracy has ever done. And uh, anyway, so I figure I've got maybe one more video on me on on the Brexit. I just wanted to vent a little about having actually been to one of these really very multinational facilities recently what people's opinion, including the people of Britain is, on the Brexit in the, in the scientific community. And then after that, um, I hope to get back to something else. Well, I mean, the, the sheer size of this screw up with the Brexit is just, it's, it's off the scale. I mean, you, you think that Ken Ham with his uh, recently opened Dinosaur Adventureland Park, which cost $100 million or something, you think that's a waste of money. Britain was getting 300 million pounds extra or euros out of the EU than it was putting in. So, I mean, it just eclipses everything else. Anyway, after that, uh, the thermal camera, which I crowdfunded uh, about a month ago, has just arrived. So I've got to go pick that up shortly. And so hopefully I'll, I'll do some 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 interesting unboxing stuff with that. But I, I've got to tell you, there are just so many cool things that I can do with that. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, so I, it, it just instantly off the bat, I'll be able to show you some really 
really cool things because it's like having uh, x-ray vision that sort of thing you, you see things comp you can see physical processes with a thermal camera that you just cannot see with the naked eye so anyway um, yeah we'll be getting back to stuff like that thanks <laughs>